What's going on everybody? Hagrid Hybrid. Awesome feedback in the last video with the Miracle Grow uh, tomato plant food. Uh, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised uh, about the positive, you know, outcome of that. And it makes me happy to move forward with it. And I, I do accept that challenge gracefully. And I'll do my best to facilitate it to the best of my abilities. Um, <clears throat> in hindsight, I did mention in one of the last videos that we might have another light coming. And, uh, you know, Spider Farmer notified me, hey, you might have some stuff coming. And to, to my surprise, we, we got just that. It just showed up. So let me open this bad boy with you right here in this video. I don't know what's in this box, but I'm, I, I mean, I kind of got, got an idea. But based on the content that they see me post, you know, they send some stuff. If it's new, if it's fresh, if it keeps things rolling. All right, guys, let's check it out. Let's cut it open. Woo! Looks like a new Spider Farmer SE7000. Let's check this thing out. It's it's bright and it's flashy. Let me pull it out of the box. Let's go over the paperwork. All right, so here we got their uh, official grow uh, user manual. 650 to 665 nanometers between 3200K, 4200K, 4800K, and 5000K. So we were running four diodes on this fixture and it seems like maybe five one two three four five diodes so that would be your i guess your your reds every pretty much every spectrum that you'd want like <clears throat> in an led fixture um and the fixture itself consumes 730 watts at 120 or 277 volts at full capacity um at 120 Volts, it's drawing 5.95 amps, and on um, 240 volts, uh, alternating current is drawing 2.9 amps, so basically just about half. Just about half, just remember that. Anything 120, 240, you always, always prefer to you know run 240 if you can, but if you're only running one fixture and one grow tent, you absolutely do not need to install anything special just to be safe, miscellaneous equipment and two Spider Farmer SE 7000s, I would run on one 20 amp breaker with 120 volts. That should be fine. Five by five foot flowering space. Commercial flowering space is um, four, four by four. Um, I personally am a true believer and the Spider Farmer SE 7000 can handle up to up to seven by seven. So I think they're undervaluing these uh, <clears throat> specs a little bit, but that's fine. Um, Samsung, it's all Samsung diodes right here. Diodes, because people ask me these questions and I never get a chance to go over the paperwork with you guys. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little extra time out on this one and show you right here, Samsung. So it weighs 26.4 pounds. Um, it is, the dimensions are 50, or excuse me, 45.3 inches by 45.3 inches. It's a, it's a large light and it absolutely covers a four by four, you know, foot area perfectly, completely perfect. Um, I, I want to say it goes up to, like I said, seven by seven elevated. I like to keep my, this is a very common question. So I hope everybody that asks this question constantly on every video how high do you keep your lights two feet i keep my lights two feet preferably two feet unless they're clones or uh you know premature small teens and stuff like that they're really small they're plants that are acclimating and they're just they're developing still i like i'll just keep them three four feet it doesn't really matter and i'll keep the lights dimmed all the way down so in the tent what you saw yesterday on the uh, <clears throat> for the Miracle Grow inclusion video was basically, you know, the lights are dimmed all the way down. Those are baby, baby, babies. There's no food in the water. You know, I'm not trying to stress them out. So I'm, I'm waiting for them to bounce back and then we'll move forward with that. If you're interested in the uh, SE1000W right here, that light actually weighs 33 pounds. So it would be seven and a half pounds heavier than the se 7000 and that light is uh 
the dimensions of the SE 1000W are the exact same. It's 45.3. Um, full spectrum for the SE 7000 is uh, right here. And they pretty much look regardless of, well, the G860W has, is different. And the rest of them, SE1000W, SE5000, SF1, 2, 4000, 7000, that's this one right here, are all the same. To those of you that haven't installed one of these before, this might help you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this thing out of the box gently. Be gentle, okay? Um, if you have extra cardboard or blanket, lay that out. And then you can assemble the fixture either on top of a carpet or something like that. I don't want the diodes to get damaged or scratched or, you know, bent or any kind of damage to the diodes. So if we're, I'm going to install it on this flooring right here in front of you. I'm going to lay out something to where I can uh, do that without any harm to the fixture. I do have um, a video that I've done this before and it's actually in time lapse. So, you know, that helps. It is time lapse, but it does help. You get the idea. So I'll post that video in the description of this video and leave a link for you guys so you can check that out too as well. They advise that the lights, that this is the you know green mark, that's the appropriate way. Um, I know from personal experience if you're running a canopy from left to right so let's just you know a let's try to imagine a graph here point a point b well the lights are like kind of uh they're corrugated to where they have it set up to where it's like the it's not really a reflector but it is kind of channeled it's almost like a c channel so it kind of if you set it up like this the light will be more prone to be reflecting that way, you know, front and back. Well, I don't have, if there's no canopy up here in the front and there's no canopy up here in the back, and this is my personal thoughts. So my apologies to, you know, Spider Farmer or anybody else. I'm not trying to insult the intelligence of anyone here, but this is my personal layout opinion, okay? Do what you will with your own Spider Farmer lights. But this is important because I believe that the most appropriate layout, if you're running a canopy from point A to point B, left to right, and there's no canopy either in front of you or behind you, that I think that this is the more, more appropriate layout, only because the channeling of the lights is when you run the lights like this, and there's no canopy in front or back, the, the light and the LED go, reflects to the left and it reflects to the right, thus covering the neighboring canopies. And you get a crossover um, of the the light, the footprint of the light. And I might be just over exaggerating, and it may not even matter. But um, just visually working with these lights for like the past three years, this is my overall consensus, and I believe that this method here is a valuable option i'm not saying that this one is wrong this one is right the the definitely you know c figure c here is definitely wrong do not do that <laughs> the only time that i would do something like this is if you were running an l shape in your room and it, it, you know a lot of people do an l shape they have a door or a closet so they fill up the back wall and they might hit one or two extra lights over here, you know, on the side. So what they'll do is they'll butt two lights up together in this fashion. So if you can imagine light A, light B, butt it up, and then they take this light and they put it over here, and that's a complete L shape. So you'd be running an L canopy. Um, it all depends on what you're doing exactly is, uh, is going to be... Uh, it's going to determine how you lay out your lighting fixtures. Um, but if you're running a wall, absolutely do not do this. This is completely wrong. But these here are definitely um, more appropriate layouts for your Spider Farmer LED lights. All right. So by the way, I know there's a lot of LEDs out there that don't come with the controller. Just so you know, LED, Spider Farmer lights come with controllers um as far as the spider farmer se 
1000 uh, series, they come with the, the functioning dimmers built in. So you have that option without having to buy additional equipment. Can you believe that some of these companies have the audacity to charge you multiple thousands of dollars for lights that are quote unquote made in America, which they are not. And then they don't even give you the, uh, they don't even provide you a dimming option that just totally blows my mind that they would sell you a light for such a high dollar value and then turn around and not even provide the most simplest feature of the light, which is an on and off switch, um, tethering ports where you can connect these lights uh, tandemly to one another in series. And it says right here, all lights SF series can be dimmed on a daisy chain up to 20 lights on the SF. Now, if you're running the SE series, which is what we're you know handling right now, you can daisy chain up to 30 lights, man, with one with one controller. And let me tell you, every light comes with a controller. You don't have to pay extra for it. It's provided already because they know that is, uh, you know, that is a that is a feature that shouldn't be uh, left out of the product at all. In my opinion, you shouldn't have to purchase something like that if you're already paying top top dollar for a product. And that just blows my mind that some of these other companies would actually do something like that to a customer. Like I said, up to 30 lights on the SE 7000 series. And, and you're basically just jumping. They provide all the necess necessary hardware to run the lights you know, in tandem and then daisy chain together. They provide the cables. Every single light has a controller and a dimming option. So you have, it's very versatile. You have many, many options when using these lights. So, and they go over all of this stuff right here and very plain, easy to read text, which, uh, They've done quite a good job in in uh, revamping the, this manual here. So, and then we get into the Dutch, the Dutch vision of the instructions. I don't know that one, so I can't read Dutch. But let's assemble this. Mo let's pull it out of the box. In between each bar is a uh, protective styrofoam insert. So everything is. There's no way that's getting damaged in shipping, unless there's just pure negligence on the. Uh, the handling part of it. So closer inspection of the light, it looks like they've kind of spread out some of the, the intensity from um, making it even between the ends of the bars to kind of putting a little bit more emphasis right here towards the, the ends of the canopy, which is the ends of the canopy, not much with LED, but depending on what you're doing, the ends, the edges of the canopy tend to suffer. So they've redesigned this in the sense that the edges of the canopies will be covered from here on out, thus creating more yield on the edges of the canopies and the edges of the canopies do not suffer loss. Look at this new header rail right here. Woo, shit is flashy, bro. Look at that. I love the colors too. It's finally, it's finally good to see them kind of like incorporate, you know, some some colors uh, into the light. And honestly, looking at this right here, it looks like these bars, they've redesigned this to where they just snap in. So let's take a look at that. That's dope. For the front, when you see all these cables, okay, they connect to the ends of those bars, how we have them laid out right there. And also flashy as hell, I love it. Check this out, oh my gosh. I could literally just screw this thing right to the wall now, like they have these. If you don't wanna run these brackets, you can take it off and just bolt it to the wall. Or you can leave the, It's. it can just act as a spacer. You can also bolt that to the wall. Um, via these holes here, they provide these holes. And I'm sure that they provide some hardware for that as well. Here's the um, the onboard controlling unit that we were talking about earlier that is uh, supplied with 
Oh, you hear that click? Woo, that's off. So on my previous SE7000, there is no off. It's just a minimum. So it goes from minimum. Ooh, I like that click. All the way to maximum. <clears throat> I do like the, the option of just being able to reach up even if your lights are daisy chained and being able to turn that off altogether. And here you go. And on the previous SE7000 model, there was an option, optional switch back here where it just basically disabled or enabled all the dimming features on your unit. You had to have that on. But right here, it's pretty self-explanatory. On this new unit, there's only one switch and two channels and you'll just, you know, one channel, two channel, one channel, two channel, daisy chain all your lights together. Simplicity, and uh, it's beautiful. Now the ballast is a remote ballast, and you can position it anywhere. In fact, I think there's an option to where you can possibly attach it to the top of the light, light bars if you're uh, looking to save some space. But I would suggest just running this power cord with the ballast externally outside of your tent. So there is no, um, you know, potential like excess heat or damage to the ballast if you do, in fact, leave your tent zipped up and the humidity builds up to 100%. You could potentially damage any and all equipment in your tent. So always be wary of that. But that is grower's negligence, not spider farmer. Provided bridle cables and the uh, the jack for running your lamp, your lights in tandem up to 30 lights, and they also provide light hangers. Ratcheting yo-yo straps, how could you go wrong? Okay, what these are is these slide in and lock into your ballast down here. They're channeled and they lock together, and then you're able to set and mount your ballast on top of the light bar, and that's what this channel is right here. And I don't know what this is. It's like some weird, like kinky tool. I don't know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, now that we've gone over um, unboxing and the specs of the product, let's go ahead and just see how easy this thing is to, to assemble. Earlier, uh, I had specified that it comes with hardware. This one doesn't have hardware to attach the bars to the, the frame the actual framing so they just snap in which is freaking excellent because you don't have to tinker with a million little screws everywhere so this is awesome so your light bar snaps right into the frame just like that and just like that it snaps in and locks in no more funky little screws that was about 30 seconds of assembly per side I could probably assemble, unbox and assemble this entire light in under five minutes, easily. Clips, as we, as, as mentioned earlier, these clips, look, look. Woo, man, they stepped up the game. I'm really liking this light. Look at this. Bam. And now, these tabs and this plastic are fastened right to the top of this fixture. They have gone out of their way to add more innovations to their lights. Not only that, they provide you with everything you need. There's nothing else to buy. The ballast hardware snaps right into the corrugated plastic. The thing is mounted securely and it's not going anywhere. Power cord, pretty simple. seven feet long roughly plug it into the ballast then you would plug that into your timer and you're ready to go one final step inside the connection for the the ballast to the cord is uh, is an o-ring so it is ip rated i don't know what for but it's a click that's it your 120 cord for the wall it could be ran at 240. If you're running a lot of lights, the actual receptacle built into the lighting controller accepts 240 straight prong and 120 prong, which is what you see right there on the floor. 
and can facilitate either 120 or 240 prongs straight to the receptacle on the lighting controller. One last step. Let's connect all these. And just like that, in about another 30 seconds, I was able to plug all eight of those bars in. And it is a push and click connection. There are arrows as indicators to where you line up the grooves and there is a rotation mark as another arrow where you push it in and you turn it and it clicks and they snap together. Now in the additional hardware bag, I'm loving this light, I'm telling you. It's a beautiful thing. Here's your cord provided. You don't have to pay extra for it. Here's the bridle cables. Let's install those. I'm not gonna use them, but there's a lot of people out there that are gonna use them, so let's install them. All right, so we got the bridle cables installed. And what I did note, as far as the bridle cables, they made a big, big change in them. Um, it, the littlest things go a long way. They shortened them, which means that the bridle cables have a, a, a lower um, clearance now. So they're not so long and people are going all kinds of crazy trying to you know, buy themselves some additional height in your, your typical eight foot you know, fashion uh, roof from floor to ceiling. So let me demonstrate that here. They give you two ratchet ropes. There you go. And that's what I mean by very short clearance, nine inches. This thing used to be like a crazy 20 inches or something. So if you're connecting your, your carabiner from here to here, from A to B, the center point on your bridle rig is now exactly nine inches. Also, these little tools, these kinky tools right here, I have no idea what they're for. <laughs> and uh, I did go over the owner's manual and you know, they're probably such a new little addition. They obviously mean something. And I'm hoping to get some additional feedback from the feedback from the viewers on this. I don't see where they implement these C channeled hangers at all. But I can only imagine that there is a very practical use for them. I'm just not entirely sure. And I know there's something I'm missing. And that's only because this particular kinky little tool is not covered in the manual. So, you know, companies make improvements and additions to their products all the time. So that's not uncommon. Um, but at least they had the, uh, you know, the decency to send out that. And I'm sure it has a, has a use case or they, wouldn't, or they wouldn't send it. I don't see why they would send it. This light was assembled in under five minutes. I'm very excited about getting this light up and installed and in that tent so we can get rocking and rolling with the miracle grow and spider farmer the new spider farmer se 7000 lighting edition man it's like a rocket ship dude we're going to the moon baby Woo! all right guys higher hybrid see you in the next video thanks for all the encouragement and support love you all peace Woo! Hey, what kind of unboxing video is this? Unless there's a visual of the, the actual lights just lit up in all their famous glory. Hallelujah, baby. Woo! Spider Farmer. That's one bright. Peace.